It's now time for your Election Crimes Bulletin with Greg Tallis. And you're listening to Flashpoints on Pacifica Radio. This is the Election Crimes Bulletin. We're now joined by Greg Pallas, gregpallas.com. He joins us from somewhere in Europe. Greg, Mm -hmm. it's time for another edition of the Election Crime Bulletin, and you uh, do some pretty important work. This week, we're going to take a look at uh, the ignoring the insulting of a huge voting block. That's the Asian American vote. We heard a lot about Trump's insults in terms of the black community and accusing uh, Kamala that she is not black at all. Uh, She's South Asian, insulting the entire Asian community. Why don't you set this up for us? And then we'll go through how important this community really is to this election. Yeah, weirdly, the media spent its time, you know, saying that uh, Trump, when he went before the organization of uh, African-American journalists, that he was saying, oh, well, hey, Kamala Harris just turned black. You know, she was always uh, an Indian-American, you know, South Asian. Uh, And suddenly she decided to become black. And everyone was all upset because it was dissing the black community. What they're forgetting about this, that he was doing a a double. He was also dissing. Um, and putting down the Asian American community. And the one thing is, one thing we have to learn about the Asian American community, everyone is so focused on those teeny weeny percentage of African American males who've said that they might support Trump and the kind of shift to the right of the Latino community. And those are big groups, but they're about 30 million each. But what's forgotten is that the Asian American community is the fastest rising voter group in America. In the last, since the last election, 2 million more Asian Americans have become eligible to vote. They are now 15 million, and they're far more up for grabs than the uh, African American or Latino community. People don't realize it's 15 million eligible voters, 2 million more than four years ago. And when you look at states, swing states, like, you know, because I concentrate a lot on Georgia, they have 328,000 Asian Americans in Georgia. That's the state that Biden won by less than 12,000 votes. Wow. So Trump is waking a sleeping dragon of a vote, and his putting down of the Asian American community is serious. But what's really more important that almost no one talks about, and I'm glad you're giving me the opportunity, I'm one of the few journalists that actually looks at the suppression of the Asian American vote. And that's it's an amazing story. As usual, Greg, uh, you're on the cutting edge in this uh, struggle to have a fair election and to have representation across uh, the country and to understand uh, what's going on. So let's what else do we need to know about the demographics? And then let's talk about the way in which uh, Asian American voters are really shunted. Uh, when they should be courted. Yes. I mean, we have about, uh, according to um, the, uh, one of the main Asian American voting groups, that, that, we, that 57% of Asian Americans have never been contacted by the Republican Party, and an even greater percentage not by the Republicans. They're, they're, it's, a, it's a demographic which is ignored. But even it's, when I say ignored, ignored in terms of trying you to win over. You contacted by the Democratic Party, right? Right. They, so you they're said Republican twice. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, yes. Sorry. The Democratic 57 percent of Democrats uh, of yes. Asian Americans have not been counted by the Democratic Party, even more by Republicans. But here's the thing. While they ignore them in terms of winning over the vote, the parties, the GOP knows exactly how they're moving, because it used to be a majority Republican voting group until the year 2000. Then it began shifting. And now it's it's almost as if the, the Asian American vote has turned black. They vote seventy. They voted seventy three percent for Obama. They went, and they went big for Biden. But so what's happened is, is that the GOP is now, because of the shift in their in the voting, has now gone heavy into suppression of the Asian American vote. You know, we talk a lot about the suppression of the black vote and Latino vote, and and you know we've talked about the Native American vote. But the attack on the Asian American vote is breathtaking and little noted because it's a community that um, it's the only demographic community, uh, ethnic community in America where the majority of voters, 54% were foreign born and and naturalized. These are people that 
that a lot of the community is a bit afraid to raise their heads and they see what happens. Uh, when when they do, they they get slammed, and it's uh, very uncomfortable for this immigrant community. We had, um, in in one case, a horrific story when I was in Georgia. Uh, a group called Ten Thousand Koreans Vote. A woman named Helen Ho, an attorney, uh, was trying to register ten thousand Korean Americans in Georgia, and uh, she got about four thousand names signed up in the first round, and then she noticed that the Secretary of State at the time, Brian Kemp, now the Republican governor, never put those names. They didn't put the 4,000 Korean-American names on the voter rolls. They sent in all these forms. And so when she called to complain to the office, where's our where's our voters? They said, oh, you never – we don't have any forms from you. You don't have any voters. Really? And then so she said, oh, yeah, I do because I know because I've got photocopies of the registration forms in response Brian Kemp's office, who has his own police force, the Secretary of State of Georgia, sent in robocops, you know, with with guns and those flat jackets and the whole thing, kicked in the doors, took their computers and based and arrested elderly Asian American, Korean American uh, vote registrars. They eventually dropped the charges, but they destroyed the group. It was the 10,000 Koreans was, uh, vote was put out of business. They said it was election tampering. To photocopy wow. the registration forms, even though the purpose of photocopying was to stop the real crime, which they caught, which is simply not putting their their people on the voter rolls. So this is a type of terror that the Asian American community is facing, and they are not allowed community because, again, of, of their of their history and demographics, but they are under attack. And this is just one of the several ways that the Asian American vote has been under attack. Wow. Now, so, Greg, talk a little bit about, really, the implications. If this voter block, this Asian American voter block, is effectively prevented from voting in, at various levels, what are the implications? Uh, is this meaningful? Meaningful? Does this change the, the nature Gigantic. of the vote? Obviously, the, things are going to be close. I mean, I don't think the average American doesn't realize that there are 15 million Asian American voters that are eligible, you know, and somehow the parties are missing this. But except for the Republicans, who know that they got to crush that vote because it's three quarters Democratic and especially because it's a young, it's also a young demographic. So and, and this is particularly important, obviously, in the state of Georgia, which has this huge high tech community uh, with Asian Americans. And you also have in Texas. I'm going to tell you something, Dennis. I was in Texas. If it weren't for vote suppression, that would be a blue state, no question. They've done everything to crush that vote, and the and there's 1.1 million Asian Americans in Texas. This is not small. If they are allowed to vote, Texas turns blue, and so they're doing everything that they can to stop it. And and um, I've been looking at at suppression statistics, like who gets purged from the voter rolls, who's Provisional ballots don't get counted. Who's write in, who's mail in ballots don't get counted. This is, you know, one of the nasty little secrets of American democracy, which we've talked about, is that we don't count all the votes. Uh, in the 16 presidential election and uh, similar in the 2020 uh, election, two and a half million voters were shunted to provisional ballots. You show up, your name's not on the rolls, they don't like your ID, they don't like how you look, whatever it is. They give you a provisional ballot, which I call a placebo ballot, because you think you voted, but you haven't. So people fill out these provisional ballots, stick them in an envelope, and of the two and a half million, and this is an official figure. This is not Greg Pallett's conspiracy stuff. This is from the Federal Elections Assistance Commission. Two and a half million people shunted to provisional ballots, and over and 43%, over one million of those ballots were thrown in the garbage. One million ballots in the trash can. Now, if it were random, who cares? But I'm going to tell you right now, Asian American voters are 300 percent more likely to be shunted to a provisional ballot than a white voter. It's almost as bad for the black and Hispanic communities, almost 300 percent more than white voters get. So in that, you have to understand that that million votes that are thrown out are just unbelievably weighted to voters of color, but especially Asian Americans. Uh, we also have the question of why are people sent to provisional ballots? What's going on here? 
because they're getting purged from the voter rolls. And one of the things that the uh, that the uh, Helen Hove of uh, 10,000 Koreans vote noted, there aren't a lot of last names in, in the Asian American community. They get crushed down to Ho and, um, you know, um, Ho and Wong and David Kim, et cetera. And what's happened is that the, the trick of the Republican purge operations, I'm not talking hundreds of thousands of voters, I'm talking millions of voters, who are getting purged because they'll say, oh, David Kim voted in Atlanta and David Kim voted in Arizona. They must be the same David Kim, so we're going to cancel their votes or not let them vote. We're going to cancel their registrations. So that's like the cross-check program. Did you know that Interstate Cross-Check, which was this program to stop double voters, literally tagged one in eight Asian American voters. Let me repeat that. One in eight Amer- Asian American voters were tagged for removal from the voter rolls under the interstate cross-check urge program. Now, we got rid of that one, but they're coming up with new ones. Same thing. Someone puts in a change of address form named David Kim, and you know, uh, 800 David Kims, in several states, lose their vote because they say, well, they've, they're double registered or they have moved. So you have this problem. They, and they know, they understand, look, the guys who are doing the purging programs, no demographics inside now. And they know that the Asian American community, if you use a name matching method for purging voters, you're going to get a lot of David Kims. You're going to get a, a lot of, of, of Asian Americans. And they know it. And they know what, and they know that when they say we're, these are voters of color, their color is blue. And that's that's so you have provisional ballots, and then and then you got another one. I'll give you one more, which is that mail-in ballots. You know, we mail in our ballot, and we think oh, it gets counted. Well, according to MIT, as many as one in seven mail-in ballots gets lost, never received, never counted, disqualified. I do know that Asian Americans have the highest rate of rejection of mail-in ballots of any ethnic group. It's not random. These guys who are knocking out the ballots, purging people from the vote, shunting voters to provisional ballots, they know exactly what they're doing. They know whose votes, the, who's going to get hit by this. They play the numbers. They play the statistics. They play the demographics. And it's ugly. It is racism by statistics. Just to sort of broaden it out a little bit, Greg, mm-hmm. because we've been yes. on this trail for a long time. How would you evaluate... We've been watching the movement of voter suppression, the expansion. We've been following it through many years. Where are we now? What are the multiple dangers? You're talking about this now in the context of the Asian American community. uh, But this has really turned into a monster, right, with all the the little twitches uh, and tweaks in the law. Yes. So what's happening is is that we are— except in a few states, we're absolutely moving backwards. The, the amount of vote suppression, that is people stop from voting, where your ballots don't get counted, et cetera, has gotten worse. And again, the vote suppressors know exactly who they're going after. I, there was one study in Florida of rejected ballots. Again, we don't count every ballot. You know, oh, they say, oh, there's an extra mark on this ballot. Uh, it was folded wrong. Uh, it, there's something wrong with this ballot. Well, there are about 400,000 ballots that were rejected. It's called spoil, but you know, you don't spoil a vote by leaving it out of the refrigerator. It's someone rejects your ballot, even though there's no indication of anyone committing any fraud. And usually you can tell exactly who the person's voting for. They're just, you know, they're saying there's an extra mark or someone left off a middle initial on the outside of a mail-in ballot. And voters of color are 700% more likely than white people to have their ballot rejected for a technical reason. That's not by accident. It's not even close by accident. And, and in fact, one uh, Bob Petrakis, great voting rights attorney who's in Columbus, Ohio, said, you know, he was going to a polling station and every young black male was immediately sent to the provisional ballot table, like automatically. They've gotten more sophisticated. They've got new methods of hunting people down and crossing them off the voter rolls. I mean, one of the problems we've run into now, uh, which you'll see in my new film, which is called Vigilantes, Inc., America's New Vote Suppression Hitmen, 
is that they have very new tricks for rejecting ballots. And one of the things I'm looking at right now is even rejecting the certification of the vote at the end of the of the voting period. So, you know, this is brand new. This is what Trump tried, wanted Georgia to do. And we'll talk more about this on another, on another night, because uh, I really want to get into it. But remember, Trump wanted the state of Georgia to reject the count in the presidential race four years ago because Trump had lost by officially 12,000 votes. He lost by more, but I'm not counting all those spoiled ballots that they didn't count. It was 12,000 votes, and, they wanted, and there was pressure by Trump to reverse that ruling and not certify the vote. Well, guess what? As of this week, as of this week, the Georgia legislature passed and, and Brian Kemp, the governor, signed a bill saying that, in fact, the state election board can now reject the votes that they get from the counties. So what Trump wanted the uh, state government of Georgia to do, which they couldn't do before because they'd go to prison. Remember, Trump did get indicted for this. They didn't want to go to prison, but now they won't go to prison. It's now the law. They can now reject the the actual vote of the, of the people just on their suspicion. What do you make of Trump celebrating publicly out loud the election of uh, appointment of election workers, I guess apparently that he believes will fix the election? I mean, isn't the bottom line yeah. now, Greg, that really one only has to take a look at uh, the vote and just pick a few key parts of the country where you're going to challenge and undermine, and you can throw the election. Isn't that where we are now? Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things that's that's happened, for example, in Georgia, I mean, Trump was down there and praising the governor's new appointments to the election board, which are basically people committed to not certifying the election if we have a repeat of last time where it's a close vote and Trump loses. They're not going to certify it. Then what's going to happen? I mean, you we've got Good a question. real democracy and constitutional crisis yeah. heading down the road like a Mack truck at us. This whole business of stacking elections boards. And not only that, they went further. They didn't just put in their shills who are only going to certify an election if Trump wins. They've begun removing expert members of election boards. And removing them by the governors, like yanking out people like Helen Butler, who's a, a voting rights expert. She was on election board, and they just and the governor literally yanked her out and said, "You you know you can't serve." This is the problem. So they so the GOP is grabbing elections boards, and this is a very dangerous new element. Who are people who before the any vote is taken have already public com, basically publicly committed, in effect to say, we're not going to certify it if it ain't Trump. This is a whole new thing. And, you know, uh, so this is this is a very, very dangerous new, uh, you know, new situation, which is confronting us. Again, we're not seeing a lot of publicity. And, and we have a problem because the Democratic Party keeps saying that anyone who challenges the the wonder and sanctity and miracle of American democracy is undermining democracy. The problem is, yes, Trump is wrong. It, well, Trump, when tr- Trump is not wrong when he says the vote is rigged. He just said it again. The problem is that he's the guy and his cronies who are rigging it. And we can't call it out because if I do, for example, if I say, here's how the next election can be stolen by suppressing the Asian American vote, by purging uh, black voters, by failing to certify the actual count of the vote. If I say those things, I'm going to be removed from social media. I get blocked from social media by saying, we've got a problem with American democracy. You're not allowed to do that anymore. It's a big problem. And the Democratic Party is behind that crushing of the discussion of vote suppression. It really is uh, a huge problem. Obviously, uh, this is uh, why we do the Election Crimes Bulletin with you, Greg Pallast. And um, we're, we've got some uh, wonderful things planned in terms of trying to keep people aware and knowledgeable. You mentioned your film. We're going to be uh, getting into that. Uh, it looks like we're going to have a very yeah. special showing of that film. Uh, but we're going right. to hammer down a few final details, and then we'll tell everybody uh, about our big plan. As we go out, we're here talking about uh, Georgia, and you got these little scuffles uh, going on between the governor 
and the former president running for president again. Uh, yeah. Trump, do you make anything of that? Or do you want to remind us? No, why no, we no. Should Trump... consider yeah. him a hero. He's not. He's not really. No, uh... Uh, yeah. Go on. You know, I just mentioned all these vote suppression techniques that are happening in Georgia. Those are signed into law by the governor. How is he a, a hero of democracy? It's true that Trump doesn't like him because he refused to put himself in a position where he was going to be indicted along with Trump. Remember, Trump was indicted. OK, so right. it, it's not that Brian Kemp, the Republican governor of Georgia or his secretary of state, Brad Raffin's perjure. It's not that they are great stand up guys in, you know, standing up for democracy. They just were not going to go to prison for Trump. And these are felony crimes. So what they did was they did a, the what the real GOP trick. And I'm not picking on Republicans as a partisan thing, but it's only Republicans who are doing this which is that they're taking election crimes and they're making them legal. They're decriminalizing theft of the vote. When you say we don't have to accept the vote of the people coming in from the counties, you're saying I'm just not going to count. I'm just not going to count the votes. And they're talking about specifically targeting Fulton County. Now, Fulton County is Atlanta. They're talking about disqualifying the vote from Atlanta in Georgia. Think about that a minute. Disqualifying the vote from Atlanta. This is not small stuff. No, it is not. All right. Yeah. Well, that is the Election Crimes Bulletin for this week. We've been joined by Greg Pallast. You can check out his work at gregpallast.com. Uh, he will be contributing as we uh, move into the election season. We've got lots of surprises for all of you, Greg. Uh, thank you for joining us, and we will talk to you next week. You're very welcome, Dennis. See you then.